We're going to start off by working our way towards a simple example models a pair of drivers that are driving down a road or a line, really. Let's start off with just a single agent that is driving at a fixed speed along a line. So in continuous time, what we have is the system dx equals omega, where omega is a fixed constant. In discrete time, what would that look like? Well, we would have ex equals x plus omega. In each of these settings, this is really simple. I mean, look, we can get the explicit solutions. In continuous time, x of t is omega t plus x naught, the initial position. In discrete time, xn is equal to omega times n plus x naught. What are you doing? You're just, you're just moving down the road at some fixed speed. Now, where it gets interesting is what happens when we have two drivers whose states evolve according to this simple system. Well, that's not so interesting because we just have two drivers moving at a fixed speed. They're going down a road and they're just doing their thing. If their speeds are fixed, then they have some fixed difference between them based on the initial conditions. Maybe they're at the same position or maybe one is ahead of the other. But what if, what if we couple them together? And if one of them is ahead of another, then that guy slows down a little bit. The other one maybe speeds up a little bit. Let's think about how that would work. Let's consider a pair of drivers that exert this slight influence on each other. So in continuous time, what do we have? We have x1 and x2, where dx1 is omega, dx2 is omega. Similarly, in discrete time, ex1 is x1 plus omega, ex2 is x2 plus omega. Now this is an uncoupled system. We want to couple them together. How do we do that? The coupling is going to depend on the state difference. Let's call that phi, and let's set that equal to, I don't know, x2 minus x1. So we look at these two drivers, and they're two different lanes. They have positions x1 and x2, respectively. If we look at the state difference, x2 minus x1, that's going to tell us what kind of coupling, what kind of influence we have. So if that state difference is positive, then we want x1 to speed up a little bit and x2 to slow down a little bit. Whereas if that state difference is negative, then that means x1 is ahead of x2. So x1 should be slowing down a little bit, x2 should be speeding up a little bit. That's the idea. The way that we're going to make this work is that we're going to add or subtract a small term to the right-hand sides of these uncoupled systems. These are going to be of the form epsilon times f of phi, f of x2 minus x1, where epsilon is going to be a very small constant, a coupling constant, and this function f on the right-hand side is what we might call a coupling function, the thing that tells you what kind of influence you have. Now, what is this f? What makes for a good coupling function f? What we want is for f of zero to be zero. That means when the two drivers are at the same state, there's no influence. On the other hand, if phi is negative, so if x1 is ahead of x2, then we want f of phi to also be negative so that it slows down x1 and speeds up x2. On the other hand, if phi is positive, then we want f of phi to be positive so that if x2 is ahead of x1, x2 slows down a little tiny bit, x1 speeds up a little tiny bit. Now again, we're not saying exactly what these coupling terms are. We're just giving qualitative behavior, but we are saying that they're very small. Now, if you look at these systems in continuous time and discrete time, we can't solve them. They are fully two-dimensional coupled systems. But the big idea is that even though we can't solve these two-dimensional systems, we can, through clever manipulation, reduce it down to a one-dimensional system that we can solve. And that state difference, phi, is going to be exactly the variable that we want to pay attention to. Let's consider the dynamics 
of the state difference. Let's consider how phi evolves over time, either continuous time, in which case we're going to compute d phi, or discrete time, in which case we're going to compute e phi. Now you might say, but we don't know what phi is as a function of time, so how could we, how could we take a derivative? Ah, but wait, we know by definition that phi is x2 minus x1. So all we need to do is compute d of x2 minus x1, or e of x2 minus x1. And since these evolution operators are linear operators, these split into dx2 minus dx1 in continuous time, or ex2 minus ex1 in discrete time. And now, all we need to do is take the right-hand sides from our models. So dx2 is quantity omega minus epsilon times f of phi. And then I have to subtract off dx1, omega plus epsilon f of phi. In discrete time, very similar, I take ex2, which is x2 plus omega minus epsilon f of phi, subtract off x1 plus omega minus epsilon f of phi, and now if I examine these right-hand sides, I see that there's some cancellation. In particular, these constants, these omega terms, they go away. In continuous time, I have reduced things to the system. d phi equals minus 2 epsilon f of phi. That's a one-dimensional system. It only depends on phi. In discrete time, what do we have? We have e phi equals x2 minus x1. Oh, wait, that's phi. Minus 2 times epsilon times f of phi. Now, with these one-dimensional systems, we can do what we know how to do. Let's look for an equilibrium. And guess what? There's an equilibrium at phi equals zero. Why? Because if we remember about our coupling function f, then one of the things that we programmed into it was that f of zero is zero. So that means that we have an equilibrium where the state difference vanishes. Furthermore, because f is increasing at zero, we have a stable equilibrium. If that f were differentiable, the first derivative at zero would be positive. And since epsilon is small, this means that we have a stable equilibrium. Now what that means is that the entire system is going to evolve in such a way that the two different drivers they, they, they slow down, they speed up, they do whatever they do, but they converge to a synchronized state. And this is rather important. We have reduced this coupled two-dimensional system to a one-dimensional system and classified the equilibrium. And even though this is a simple system, just two drivers coupled together, we can nevertheless show that it converges to a coordinated state even if that coupling mechanism is weak and we don't know exactly what the coupling function is. I wonder if that might be a useful idea.